In order to create this piece, the first thing I had to do was find my backdrop, which is what you're seeing on my screen right now. Um, and the reason for that is, um, normally I would not use stock photography. I would uh, create my own backdrop for this, but like I said, the sunflower fields had wilted and I didn't want to wait for them to be in bloom again next year. Um, plus, I'm not going to find a sunflower field that is this massive here, I don't think. At least not down the road for me like I was planning on using. So um, what I did was I hopped online. There are tons of stock photography sites and I want to talk about this a little bit because um, you know it's really important that you are using images that you have copyright for. Um, this is not my photo so I make sure I purchase the correct licensure for it. Um, so if you're somebody who's going to be creating artwork to sell, that's something you need to think about. You can't just steal stuff off the internet, as nice as that would be. Um, somebody else worked really hard to capture this beautiful image, and they deserve to be paid for that. So um, I found this off of, I think it's 123RF or 1234RF, I can't remember. Um, it's a, a, a company that I've used before, and so... The reason it was important for me to pick this first is because it helps me to know how to light the photo I'm going to take of Emma. So um, the sun is coming from behind, um, the angle is a little bit down, so this helps me to know where to put my lights and it lets me know where my camera is going to need to be in relationship to her. So let's look at that real quick. Okay, so. This was our setup, <laughs> and so the reason I'm going to show you these is first so you can see I have a light set up in the back corner for backlight, and I had a light off to the front of her over here, and um, simple white backdrop, and ideally I would have had a white backdrop all the way down, but this is what I had to work with with the space I was using in Decatur, and it worked out just fine for me. So. Um, what you'll see here is I had it off to the side and then I remembered, oh, my picture, the sun would be directly behind her. So I moved that backlight to right behind her. And this is me testing. You see th this one, it's down lower. So you can see a little bit of a highlight here on her arm. And then you see it move up her head a little bit and behind her, um, higher up behind on her back. And then you can see it even a little more higher up, but I was trying to get it all the way up here because I knew I was going to need that. And I got it pretty close to where I was happy with it. So then we just started playing with some different poses because I wasn't 100% certain what posture I wanted her in in the final picture. So we just played around and tried some different things. And um, when I felt like I had the options I liked best, we then moved on to props. So this is just a fake flower I bought at Hobby Lobby. And I had her hold it in different positions around her. Now, the reason you're seeing them mostly facing towards her is because, again, that idea of they're going to be facing the sun, and if she's the sun, they'll be turned towards her. So I did do a couple where they are facing me just in case I needed it, but for the most part, they are facing towards her. Now, let's get into the Photoshop fun. So here was our base image. Now, this is a lot of layers, and you're going to see that. In this breakdown. So first things first, we dropped Miss Emma in. Now um, I'm gonna take these effects off just so you can see it a little clearer. I positioned her so that her head was right in front of where the sun is setting because that's where I had my backlight glowing from. Now I did kind of knock out all the highlights behind her because it was a little too um, harsh a white line and it looked too posed. So um, I got rid of that. And you'll notice that I didn't, I wasn't precise fully down here in how I um, edited her out, but there's a reason for that because we're gonna have so many flowers in the foreground, it's not gonna matter that much. So I just made sure I was really precise with how I um, masked around her and for those of you who are new here a layer mask is simply this button right here you can apply it to a picture and mask off part of it where you're basically making it invisible um, so we're cutting her out the reason I like to use layer masks versus just cutting her out is it's much more forgiving um, 
Some people do just cut straight out and that's fine. It's just what works best for me. Um, so then the next thing you'll see is not only do we have this layer mask, but we have some adjustment layers on top. So first color, I warmed her up a little bit. Let's just turn them off so you can see. So I think the easiest way to see the color is to kind of look in her face right here or in her hair because you're going to see it's just subtle. It's just a little bit more yellow and a tiny bit more red. We just got rid of some of that blue. Um, I like my images really warm, especially with something that has this much of a sunshine backlight to it. I felt like she needed to match that background more. And then I want her to be where your attention goes, so I added a levels layer and brightened her up. If we look at that, you can see I brought my highlights all the way up to 230 and left everything else the same. Um, so it just makes her look like she's glowing a little bit more was my intention. Now the next thing too is that I want her to be the brightest thing. I want her to be the sun. So I applied a brightness and contrast layer to the background and I just brought the brightness down to negative 24 and all that does is really just again let her be the brightest spot in this image and it adds a little more shadow and depth to the background. I know you're seeing that this layer isn't on yet and there'll be a reason for that in a little bit so we'll come back to that. Now this is where it gets time consuming. So you're gonna see I have group 1 copy, group, group 2 copy, group 2. Um, Group one is, was the first group I made, obviously, so we're gonna start there. Okay, you're just seeing a bunch of flowers come in. So let's talk about that. These flowers are all individual flowers that got cut out um, and pasted in from various angles and um, directions to add more to the foreground because, like I said, the sunflowers should be facing Emma. These are not facing Emma. We need flowers in the foreground that are turned towards her, where we're seeing the back of the heads and not the faces of them. So these would all be coming from the side facing to direct her. Um, each one of these has a layer mask. So let's just start with one that's near her. How about this one? So you can see he's right here. I'll even show you the layer mask. So there's the layer mask. Um, how did I do this? There are so many different ways you could do this. You could select the background around the flower and use that. The problem I had with that is there are, this is a very poppy, poppily lit picture. That's not even a real word. I just made it up. Um, it has a lot of high contrast. So there's going to be really dark spots and really light spots. And because of the background I was shooting on, it didn't um, stand out enough. So what I ended up doing was I used that background select, which would be like going um, select, let me get off that select color range and then you come in there and you would select a color from the picture and then it will ha it will um, select with like a masking tool a lasso tool or whatever that color um, I did that for the initial part but then I went in and this is why it was so tedious um, by hand with a paintbrush and paintbrushed around it um, to get the fine detail that I wanted because again I don't want it to look like I plopped these flowers in. I want them to look like they're actually there. The other thing is that each flower has its own adjustment layer as well. So with this flower there is a bright, they all have brightness contrast layers just to save time here, um, but the degree to which they are adjusted is different. So this flower has a negative 40 brightness and a plus 7 contrast. Um, but you'll see that other flowers have different ones. So um, this one far off to the side over here, you see him disappear. He has a brightness of negative 67. And my logic for this was the further they are away from her, the more in shadow they are going to be. So only the, the ones that are closer to her were a little brighter. The ones that are farther from her, I dropped the brightness down even more on. Um, so even like one over here in this far right corner, its brightness and contrast was negative 90. Um, so they're all just a little bit different. 
um, based on where they are located in proximity to the subject. Now we're going to jump up to group two because this is technically the second group I did. Um, and these are grouped because group one is all these ones that are angled. They're not straight facing her, they're facing her from sides, essentially. These are more straight on. So, um, same general concept. I went in, I color selected, and then I fine tuned the selections. Um, so let's start with one that's a little more prominent, like this guy right here. And you can see now why I wasn't worried about the finish down here, because the flowers are totally covering up that edge. You cannot see that I didn't finish painting that in. Um, okay, so again, layer mask painted around the detail. Now I could have gone in and masked off these little highlights in the middle where you're seeing between petals, but since it blends in with her dress, I wasn't worried about that. Um, the next thing that we did is, again, all of these also have brightness and contrast um, adjustment layers. So this is this flower here, this big bad boy. And he has a brightness of negative two. So I did not bring him down very much because it just wasn't necessary because he's closer to um, Emma. The other thing too you'll notice is like these ones here are bigger, these are smaller. We're trying to create perspective. And the closer they would be to the camera, the bigger these flowers would be. Um, the closer they are to Emma, the smaller they would be. So by changing the size and um, sharpness of the flowers, I was able to give the illusion of depth. Um, because these were all photographed sharp. So for instance, this flower here. You can see that this one is sharper than this one. It's, this, it's the same, they were both photographed with the same, same level of clarity, but in order to get this um, softness and focus, I went in and did a Gaussian blur. And again, they all have varying degrees of blur. I not only And I not only blurred the photograph of the flower, I blurred the layer mask as well, because that also provided the softer edges that I needed on the flower's petals edges. Um, so this was a very... Every flower was individually um, adjusted for brightness and softness of focus to create the illusion of where they are in the actual field. So I thought initially that maybe this would be all I would do was these two groups because sunflower fields typically aren't super dense. Um, they're kind of rose and they're spaced out, but it just felt like this was denser than this, and I wanted it to feel consistent. So I duplicated these layers, which is why it says group one copy, group two copy. We're gonna do group one first. So I went back in and I adjusted each individual flower within the frame so it didn't feel like I just copied and shifted it right or left, and I adjusted again the focus and brightness on each individual flower. You can see all of them here. <laughs> it was very tedious, but super fun to pay attention to that kind of detail. Same thing with group two. I copied the layer and then went in by hand and then did individually shifted all of the flowers in the frame to where they made sense to kind of create a U shape around Emma. And I adjusted again the focus by using Gaussian blurs on the flower and on the layer mask. And again, all of these have brightness adjustments as well, depending on how close they are to Emma in the frame. So, you might think that's all, but that's not all. <laughs> I created a new one, and again, we've got the same layers here. I basically just saved this, and we'll go into that in a second, why these are separate layers. If you look at these, there's a little more diversity in placement of flowers. Actually, the easiest way to do this is here. Um, so we have this one and this one. So here you can see, this is the first one, the one we just finished walking through. This is the adaptation of it. And here you can see 
the um, focus was adjusted even further, brightness was adjusted even further, and depth of field was adjusted even further. So where these are all fairly sharp, this I really went in and kind of tried to emphasize that separation in depth a little bit more. Um, so that's what you're seeing here. I did also, you'll notice there was a big flower up here. I added another big one up here just to, again, emphasize that depth. Um, I just blew him up extra big and applied a pretty drastic gosh and blur on him and on his edges. Um, so that's how we did that. Now, um, okay, so then because Emma is the light, she doesn't look very glowy here. So what we did was we added effects to her. Um, we added an outer glow and an inner glow. And these are really simple to do. You just go into your effects and because she's masked off, um, it's just going to affect the outline. So our outer glow, I selected like a warm yellowy tone. I kind of pulled it from the background where the sun would have been. And I brought it up to 250. I made it as big as it would go and um, left everything else the same. For her inner glow, I used that same color tone. I brought the opacity down to 43, so it wasn't quite as harsh, um, and I made that um, a size of 68 pixels. So it's not as dramatic as, because um, if you go in, like it's just too much, because we just want to give a hint of it. So that's how we did that. Now the final step is to add the, the editing touches. So that would be this file. And I have like a standard process I've run through. If you've watched any of my other videos, you will have seen this before. Um, my first layer is just my basic batch processing. My second layer is a levels layer. And I don't know that this one did much of anything. Nope, I could have completely left this layer off. It, I didn't use it. Um, I added a curves layer. Now, you guys have seen me do, use curves layers before. They're usually to create the effect of light. Um, which is exactly what I did here. I darkened everything around Emma and kept her bright. So that's all that is. Back and forth real quick so you can see the background's darkening down. And um, I often don't always pull down the highlights on my curves layers, but in this case I did because, again, I wanted to give the idea that she is the light and often your highlights are going to be much, much dimmer when it's dark out. So that was why the highlights came down with the mid-tones. I also added a vignette because, again, I am emphasizing Emma is the glow here. And I also have um, a bunch of different toned vignettes. And this one's kind of a blue tone. So if it's nighttime, you're going to have more of a blue tone to your shadows. That's why I wanted to go ahead and do a blue toned vignette. And then I finished with a matte uh, filter. And again, the reason for this is you're going to have less contrast if it's dimmer out. And I was trying to create the idea that it's dim, like it's it's the, it's darker out. It's the fun sun hasn't fully set, but we're getting there. So you wouldn't have um, a huge contrast in your shadows and highlights. Adding that matte, matte finish helps to give that illusion. And I simply masked it again off of Emma because she is the light, she would have that contrast. Um, and I also wasn't worried about it hitting the contrast being present in some of those flowers around her because she's lighting them up and we would see those highlights and lowlights in the flowers around her. So that's how I created this image. It was a lot of work, but so much fun. And I think the thing that's really interesting about it is it looks like it would be rather simple. You take a picture and you just plop a girl into the scene, but the reality is all of these flowers are individually cut out and altered to fit within the frame. Um, and that's one of the really fun things about these photo composite artwork pieces is that they can be really simple or they can be super complex and you get to decide what you're creating and how realistic you want to try to make it look. So I hope that was interesting to you guys. It was so much fun to do. I hope Emma loves it and I will hopefully have another piece to share with you guys soon. Thanks so much. Bye!